Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. And in today's video, we're going to discuss why no one actually needs to see your images for you to be great at photography. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So I've not done a video for a while and it's not been for lack of trying. I've been out doing landscape photography several times, but with everything that's been going on in the world, it just left me feeling like no one needs to see me right now having a great time on the side of a mountain somewhere. I might be totally wrong though, and that's exactly what you need. I don't really know. Let me know down in the comments because I want this content to be for you and not just something that benefits me. Anyway, from that feeling I had of not wanting to share my videos, I then started thinking about photography again because one thing you hear quite a lot is people saying that you should just shoot for yourself. Now, I've wrestled with this idea and it always leaves me feeling a little bit flat because there are aspects of it that I don't agree with. And I think it offers much greater value if we break it down a bit. I think it often gets said, especially online, to guard us against the unpleasant aspects of social media. When we share our images, we are putting ourselves out there and that can be an extremely nerve wracking experience. And really, I don't find it gets any easier either because once you share great work, people start to expect that of you. And there's a very natural desire to want to maintain that level or improve upon it. And that can quickly become stressful and start to ruin your enjoyment. I find saying just shoot for yourself does not really help people because it's too simple and does not address the real issues. So let's break it down and acknowledge the very important difference between making an image and publishing an image. And this is something that's helped me navigate this whole space really. So it's remained enjoyable where I now don't waste any time worrying about what other people think. One of the ways to live a fulfilling life is to be in control of how you spend your time and energy. Imagine all the great art, science and philosophy that would not exist if our energy consumption was decided by an external person. I don't think there should be any gatekeepers between you and the images that you make. We should be free to create exactly what we want using whatever variety of techniques, subjects and ideas that you see fit as long as no one's getting hurt, of course. You're also under no obligation to create photographs that some kind of pretentious douchebag might consider to be unique. This is especially true when you are starting photography because imitation is such an important part of learning. I also find it's incredibly useful when you're stuck in a rut just to travel somewhere you know has a great composition. Even if you end up imitating your own work, it can be enough to get your motivation back. Anyway, different weather and light conditions always keep it interesting. Having said all that though, I don't just shoot for myself because I believe art is a form of communication. And apart from making these videos alone, I'm not really interested in talking to myself. I believe great art should either say something, be emotive, entertain or delight, explore an idea, challenge or tell a story. I believe deeply that if you at least attempt to create your images in this way, the final product will be so much more meaningful to you. I'm not creating my images for a specific person or group though, or to get likes on social media. I guess what I'm doing is making the image to communicate with anyone who might see it in the future when I'm not there. A bit like someone writing a book. I'm probably never gonna hear their response. So I'm not bothered or worried about what they think. And that's also why no one actually needs to see your photography. It's about what you're saying rather than what they see. Another great way to make your work feel meaningful is to print it. Because once it becomes a physical, tangible thing, it creates a real sense of value that I find works really well as, as a bit of a positive feedback loop to motivate me to go again. History is littered with artists that remained completely unknown until after they passed away. I think these stories, like that of Vivian Mayer, connect, us, connect with us so much because the work, apart from being great, was totally authentic and seemingly just making the images was enough for her. 
For most of us, though, if we're really we're being honest with ourselves, just creating the photo is not enough. We want to publish it as well. Even just by using the word publishing rather than sharing the image immediately, I think, gives a better reflection of the considerable stress putting your work out into the world can cause. It can be incredibly nerve-wracking, and I think sometimes we say, I just shoot for myself, to hedge against the reaction. Maybe we're worried about the criticism of the photo, but also being accused of attention-seeking. Personally, I think the idea of the starving artist is utterly stupid. Wanting attention and people to see our work, as any parent or pet owner will know, is the most natural thing in the world, and we shouldn't have to fight against it or be sorry for it. This is partly because attention comes with incentives. It can very directly be turned into increased social status, give us more control, and eventually lead to financial benefits. As you successfully gather these things though, naturally other people are going to want what you have. We do, however, accept people with a lot of attention if we deem them to be keeping it real. I think the trick to staying authentic with our photography, and this is the key, is not to let the thought of publishing your image and the desire for attention to affect the making of the image. This is essentially what happens when people sell out and it's more difficult to avoid now than ever before. Before we discuss that though, as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. And I think Squarespace is the best place for photographers to build their website, mainly because it's just so easy and you don't need very much technical knowledge. Simply use one of their templates, put some of your own images and your text on there, and you'll quickly have a unique and beautiful looking website. We've just been talking about attention and you don't need much of it really to start making money. You do need a website though, and with Squarespace, you can easily upgrade to an online store to start selling things like prints. And they also now have a members area that's easily managed where you can charge a small recurring fee for your exclusive content. So hit the link down below or head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today and then use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Social media has unfortunately tapped into this very human desire for likes and attention. And it can be all too easy to fall into a trap of creating photographs in a way that we think people online are going to like it. NFTs have made this even worse, but heavily edited images, super saturated colors, and crazy contrasts have become very popular because they drive a lot of views. The algorithms can also create feedback loops that unnaturally drive the creative direction. For example, someone posts a an awesome shot of a Highland cow. Lots of people like it, so the algorithm starts showing more pictures of Highland cows. Then we think, ah, pictures of Highland cows are popular. So we go and photograph a Highland cow. We post that, and then before you know it, all we see in our timelines are desaturated, split-toned Highland cow images. But then for some reason, inevitably, the likes don't arrive on our perfect Highland cow image. We compare this to someone else who has thousands of likes and it feels exceptionally deflating. <laughs> someone who's been through all of this. Even when your images go somewhat viral, it's nice for a while, but ultimately social media will never provide us with validation. So whilst no one needs to see your photography, what can we do if we want to tap into some of these incentives, uh, but still maintain our sanity and well-being? I like sharing my images and I will continue to do so, including on social media, because I apply two very simple rules that protect me. Number one, I publish everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's been so many times when I've posted an image I didn't really like, but others have then loved it. Publishing everything was completely liberating once I decided not to be the gatekeeper to my own work. Secondly, I maintain that kind of Zen reaction to feedback by applying the rule of one. This is simply knowing that one person, if one person likes an image or dislikes it, you are guaranteed that someone else will too. 
like I said, these numbers don't provide validation. Low numbers do not mean you're a bad photographer and equally high numbers do not mean you're a great one. By not worrying about the publishing stage, it allows me to just go out and try and make meaningful images. When I went out last week, filming a video with everything that's going on at the moment just felt a bit pointless. And whilst I was enjoying being out, the weather wasn't great and I wasn't feeling particularly inspired. So instead I just sat there and generally was frustrated. But then as it so often does, nature rewarded me. As I was staring out at that spectacular coastline, the br for the briefest moment, the clouds parted just enough to cast these delicate rays of light down onto the water, creating a striking contrast. Now, I'm not a religious man, but it felt like a very spiritual moment and was exactly what I needed. So I've called this one, Hope Never Dies. And this is now this week's continuum image. Head to the link down below and you can pick up one of the five A2 prints available. If they don't sell out again, uh, they'll be available for seven days and then they'll be gone forever. Or you can as well support the channel by checking out my book, and which not only contains my best images from the last few years, it also has some exciting and hopefully inspiring stories from my time in the police. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.